guys and welcome back to my channel where we spill tea left, right and everywhere in between. In today's video, we are covering Jeff Wittick keeping his word and suing David Dobrik. James Charles actively and very vocally recruiting new besties via the DMs and Emma Chamberlain and her return to YouTube. We all know the series of events that unfolded after Jeff Wittick's accident where he sustained possibly permanent damage to his eye after a poorly orchestrated stunt at the hands of David Dobrik and an excavator. There have been documentaries, podcasts, loss of friendship, and drama as far as the eye can see you guys. After some time, Jeff dropped hints here and there about possibly pursuing some sort of legal action against David. And finally, the news has dropped that he has kept his word. The 2020 accident occurred in Utah and was meant to be content for a comeback video on David's channel. But the stunt left Jeff with multiple injuries including a broken hip, foot, a torn ligament in his leg, and he also shattered his skull in nine places. It was nearly fatal for Jeff and he almost lost an eye as well. Jeff has come out a few times and spoken on this, saying that the real damage emotionally besides nearly dying was how David acted after the fact. Between not checking in, hospital payments being late, that David assured Jeff he would take care of, resulting in a hit to Jeff's credit, all around Jeff just felt abandoned by David, like he just didn't care. David nearly killed me, came back to Poston immediately, while I had my face smashed in, lost all my jobs, couldn't work for a year, and posted like nothing never happened, doing TikToks, doing house tours. David did eventually speak about it all on an episode of The Views podcast that he has, but it still seemed a bit too little too late for Jeff. And FYI guys, if somehow you miss this or you live under a rock and this is all moon talk to you, we have covered everything on this in depth up until now so you can catch up on those videos as well if you like. Well, cut to about two years later, it has been revealed that Jeff is coming after David with a lawsuit for 10 million dollars and is suing for quote, general negligence and intentional tort. Intentional tort basically means that someone does a wrongful act on purpose. The intention behind that wrongful act does not necessarily need to be the person wanting to harm the other, but the victim ends up hurt anyway. For example, if I was to stick my leg out and trip you up as a joke, but you fell and broke your arm, that would be intentional tort because I totally meant to trip you up, but I didn't exactly mean for you to break your arm. But you still broke your arm because of my attempt to be funny and trip you. Make sense? General negligence is pretty straightforward. That just means that one person's actions result harm to another person. Like one person's reckless behavior caused someone else's injury, which is pretty much exactly what happened in Jeff's case. As of right now, neither Jeff nor David have actually said anything and trust me on this, I have scoured the internet reading article after article and what's really interesting about that is the mainstream media coverage this case is already getting. There are articles with Vanity Fair, People Magazine, TMZ of course, and Page Six. There's even pieces in Entertainment Tonight, E! Online, US Magazine, and Daily Mail. I'm not sure I can think of another time off the top of my head where another YouTube legal situation has been covered so vastly by the media. Granted, this is a bit more elevated than just the standard YouTuber beef that happened frequently, but the story seems to be pretty big right now. Possibly the attention around this could be the rumor that David has hired none other than Camille Vasquez to be his legal support. If you remember, which I'm sure you do, Camille was the attorney who represented Johnny Depp in his recent defamation case against ex-wife Amber Heard. That case, I'm sure you know, was a success for Camille and she got to flex her legal skills in the courtroom for the world to see. Outside of impressing most people watching, which was a lot as the trial was televised, Camille also got some attention for the relationship people noticed between herself and Johnny. People were shipping them and commenting on how sweet they were to each other throughout the trial. In a TikTok posted back in May, you see Camille and team leaving the courthouse and saying her goodbyes, but also somehow hugs her and says, had a great talk with David Dobrik. Now, I'll play it for you, but it is kind of hard to watch, so you might need to listen a couple of times. I'll do my best to elevate the exact part for you guys. Okay. 
I had a great talk with David Douglas. Oh, good. You can hear Camille say, oh, good, which leads everyone to speculate that David has hired Camille for something, right? This is really the only thing out there right now about this, so whether it's in relation to the Jeff Whitted case or something else, I cannot confirm right now. So we will see, of course, be keeping a very close eye on this as well, but I presume that both Jeff and David will likely stay pretty silent on this for a while, as that is usually how legal stuff goes. The legal team likely will not want either party to leak anything as it could be used against them, etc, etc. You know how that is. So for now, on to some other news, and this time, James Charles wants you to slide in his dms clearly he has learned nothing i need more spontaneous friends you want to go to the beach at night i'll bring my bathing suit i'll bring snacks and you can stop and get drinks on the way i'm there and i'm ready for a good time where are these people submit your application james says that he finds it super hard to find good friends being an influencer or celebrity because you can just never know if you can trust people it's really hard to meet new people because you don't know what their intentions are you don't know you know what reason they're trying to get close to you james is looking for spontaneous friends as i guess his current ones great as they are are never down to just do stuff almost every single person in my life now but are people that i have met either on the way up or at the top so there are other influencers or people that i've been able to build trust with over a very long period of time he reckons that his person is out there but who knows if he'll ever find them because he could miss that opportunity while scrolling through his dms i just checked my dms and i'm getting so many sweet messages from you guys being like let's hang out i'm in la let's do this let's do this activity i love the energy and i would love to hang out with you guys i'm sure you're all so fucking fun he doesn't mention anything about being 18 or older to apply for this friendship position, so I will just say it for him. Or you know what? Just don't slide in James's DMs. James claims to be looking for friends, and he has said before that he will no longer be treating social media as a dating app, but he also says that he could find his soulmate. I mean, you can have friend soulmates, I guess, but just, ah, uh, don't do this. The dust has not settled on your last cancellation for this type of shit, James. Literally, what are you thinking? It kind of drives me crazy how James is just going about posting on the regular like he wasn't exposed for some pretty predatory style behavior in the past, like the recent past. I don't know. Who knows if James will even check those DMs and meet anyone and try this new friend search thing. On to some news of a YouTuber who people actually do seem to miss. Emma Chamberlain uploaded a new YouTube video for the first time in about six months and people are excited. Excited. I had a little watch of this new video and I gotta say Emma is so cute. She takes to the streets of New York in a very old school style, ask the public interview type of way and does up a little sign that says, let me ask you a question for my YouTube video. Are people gonna notice that this is plugged in? Because the second somebody sees a microphone, they're not like, is that thing plugged in? They're like, oh. You know what I mean? This is fucking public humiliation. She does some pretty basic questions like, where's your favorite place to eat in New York? And kind of takes the people's suggestions and answers and forms her day in New York around them. During the winter, I'm like a vodka soda with lime. And then like during the summer, I'm a spicy marg. <gasps> How cute are these pants? Stuff like that makes me totally lose my mind. Emma's video takes us on her New York adventure, including a trip down to the subway, which she doesn't actually want to get on. I would rather walk or just not go. I have a phobia of stepping onto the subway and accidentally falling underneath. Emma's vlog is really beautifully shot and it's just fun to go with her on her day around New York. The whole thing really is just a vibe. I'm like on my way to New York right now after watching this. No Empire State building for her though. I'm just all about weighing out the pros and cons of things. If I have to wait in a two hour line, I'm just probably not gonna do it. There's just like certain deal breakers when it comes to activities for me. After some thinking, she changes her mind on hitting the top of the tower. I think that this might be a little bit overrated and I'm saying that without going to the top. So if you're mad at me, that's totally valid because I haven't even gone to the top. Should we try to go to the top? The Empire State Building actually ends up getting an 8.5 out of 10 for Emma and she recaps her vlog by telling us that when she was younger, she would go out with her dad and he would ask people on the street the best places to go eat or go get coffee or whatever and the thought of that is just incredibly embarrassing. But after doing it herself, she ended up having some of the best food ever and all around just having a good time. The response from her viewers was very much positive, of course, with some comments reading, so glad to see you back, Emma. I have never in my entire life under any circumstances felt so so much happiness and excitement by seeing that someone uploaded a new video. Emma's back, I'm going to cry. The six months off did you well, OMG. This is the greatest video you've ever posted. Very proud of you and this is a masterpiece. I love it. All in all, it was nice to see a new upload from Emma and hopefully we will get more soon. 
But anyway, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads. And in exchange, I give you eye bleach.